Hello, it's me, and I've been asked by popular demand to wheel out this guy over here called the Dreidel 3x3. I think that's how it's pronounced. The main reason that I got it, aside from the fact that it seemed like a pretty interesting puzzle, was because I had a number of requests to go through how I would solve something like this. So I thought maybe this was a good opportunity to go through how I generally approach a new, or what appears to be a new novel puzzle. So although we'll be going through the solve of this puzzle, I'm going to go through what it is that goes into discovering how to find a solution to this. The first thing to notice is that it looks, feels, and scrambles just like a 3x3. So we don't have anything really different about that. But now you've got these corners that also turn. So that's interesting in that you're going to see that we're deconstructing the edges here a little bit. And by deconstructing the edges, that creates something, you know, more of a challenge. But it's more than just that. It turns out that because of the unique nature of this, just a small uh, semi-turn over here also scrambles, causing shape shifting, which means every one of these pieces can be separated from each other. So this promises even more of an issue. Now, at first that might seem like a daunting process, but when you think about it, anytime you deconstruct a puzzle and learn how to solve it, you, I, I go through a certain process, and that process is what can I do to move these pieces independent of each other? In other words, can I design an algorithm or a commutator that might take me beyond just an intuitive solve? So it might seem that, well, what I can do is start to reduce these guys one by one, maybe put them into the edges, but inevitably you're going to get to a point in your solve where intuitive solving itself isn't going to do it, and that by, after constructing and reducing certain numbers of them, to reduce the last few means destroying the ones that you did. So it's useful to understand how to come up with maybe some kind of a commutator that can allow for a three cycling of these little pieces. So how do you come up with that? Well, let's talk about some terminology first. Um, because we're going to go through and actually generate, because I only got this recently and haven't really played around with it too much, but I think we can come up with some kind of a way of moving these little pieces, because we've got these tiny edges over here, which are part of these edges, and then you've got these little petals over here, and then you've also got these areas of the corners here too. So you've got these inner corners, you've got these, these outer small edges, and you've got these petals. And in that you can make well, larger petals over here, and you can make wedges over here. So wedges, edges, petals, larger petals, all of these pieces may at some point need to be moved around because it might be kind of difficult to, uh, um, to sort them out. So when looking at how to solve this, what I like to do first with a puzzle is see what kind of movements can be made that can help me out with this. Because uh, what I'm anticipating is a process of reducing these petals with the edges. And in any, any process of reducing, which starts off pretty intuitive, you always end up with the dilemma of the last few layers, or the last few pieces. These are pieces where you can't put them in without destroying other pieces. So because of that, it's useful to design a commutator which can cause specific swaps of different edges around the puzzle in a predictable way. So we've got these uh, little wedges, uh, these little edges here that we can swap around, we've got these petals that we can swap around. So how do we come up with this? Well, it's actually a fairly simple process that can, that can help you out. So a commutator is a series of moves and uh, anti-moves. So that's like R-U-R-I-U-I, or U-R-U-I-R-I, or U R I U I R, something like that. And then you undo those moves. Uh, so at, at the surface, that looks kind of obvious. So if I were to do that here, if I do R U R I U I, what you see that what that did is that caused um, changes within this side over here, here, and here, but didn't cause any changes here. Now, if I reverse that and do U R U I R I, it puts everything back. Well, so what? Well, here's the thing. If you do the, uh, the first set of the moves, which is uh, a series of moves and then undoing the moves, before you reverse it, find an area that's isolated from the rest. So here's what I mean. If you do R, U, R, I, U, I, before I start and undo that move and reverse move, before I do the opposite of that, are there any pieces here that's isolated? Because I know when I do this, all of these pieces that were taken out are about to be put back in. But if I, if I find, and none of the rest will be affected, but if I find the one, a one piece, say this one, I can isolate this away from all the others and substitute another piece in with it, like this one. 
If I do that and I put this one in, so I do, in this case, an LI move midway through the commutator. When I move it back, everything will be moved back. I'm not going to touch any of these pieces, but now instead of this being moved in to its original place, this will. And this will take another spot, and then there will be a third piece involved with that too. So let's undo that, which will be U R U I R I. And now we undo that middle move again. So I, I did a LI, now I'm just going to do an L. What you're going to see is a classic three cycle. That three cycle means that this piece move to here, this piece move to here, and this piece move to here. So the, the power of a commutator is the fact that it's a very simple sequence of moves, which is a set of moves and then an undoing uh, of those moves, and then you reverse that. But if you put another move in between, if you find a piece that's isolated, you can design your own three cycle. And it, does, it doesn't even have to be something that you specifically memorize. You can do that all around the puzzle. So if you do that again, R U R I U I a move and then an unmove. Before we undo that, do the reverse of that, we then take a piece that can be isolated from our movements that won't be affected uh, by any of the other pieces around it. We'll do an L and now we undo it. U R U I R I and move it back. Once again we have another three cycle. Do it again. R U R I U I. We'll do an L I then undo it. U R U I R I and then move it back. So what you uh, can see is that we've, we've placed all that back in. So basically what that means is you can design any move anywhere in the puzzle to do that. All you have to do is do, uh, is do four moves where the last two sets where the last two moves undoes the first two moves and then you reverse the whole thing. So we can design any other commutator anywhere here. So let's say we do a so let's say we do I don't know a, um, We'll stick with the R I D I R D. So, is there any piece that we can sequester here? Uh, this one. So, let's do a L. So, now let's undo what we just did. So, we'll go turn, 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 and move this back. So, what we have is we have a three cycle on the bottom here. So, it doesn't matter what we do. Think of a sequence of moves where the last two moves in the first part of the sequence undoes what you originally did and then reverse the whole thing for the last part while finding a piece that can be isolated. So again, R I D I R D. Looking around, remember this was the piece that was isolated from the rest and we did a L. Turn, 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 turn and we bring this back. So here's our three cycle and one more, R I D I R D. Remember this was the piece here that was isolated. We simply put this in here and then turned it back and it brings us back. So that's what you can do. That ultimately is what a commutator is. A series of moves, um, two sets of moves, uh, two moves and then two other moves that undoes that. Find the piece that's isolated that you can turn that is not involved in putting anything back but is involved in the area where it stays exactly the same and then just do any other move that isolates it, that turns it out of the way, and then undo the move. That's what a commutator is. And you can invent that as you're doing this. Uh, what an algorithm is, an algorithm is like a recipe. It's a series of instructions that allows you to have a specific kind of a change with a puzzle. It might be orienting all the um, corners or orienting all the edges. That's a little bit more uh, complicated, but oftentimes an algorithm is made up of a variety of different types of uh, types of commutators. So you know. So once again, another example would be say maybe R U I and then R I U. So I did a series of moves and then uh, I did two moves and then I just undid that. This here can be isolated. Everything else is going to move back in. These are all affected. These two, this and this. This is also affected but these guys aren't. So in this layer, only this is affected, the rest aren't. So I can do a L and I can move it back. And I would just get it back. U I R I U R and move this down. So this causes a three cycle here. Um, before I so I, I did that movement before I undid it. So we'll we have to remember to do the same thing again to get that three cycle. So that's gonna be R U I R I U. We once again have this, so we'll just do another L. 
and then move it, uh, and then we reverse what we just did. Turn, 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 turn. And this is moved back down. There's our three cycle. And now we do it once more. And again, I'm just making this up as I go along. You could do the same thing. So R U I R I U. We'll do a L. Then U I R I U. All right, I think I'm gonna say that wrong, but so you get the point. So you can actually design commutators to move three pieces around. So in dealing with a complex puzzle like this, what I wanna do is see if I can design something that moves these guys. So let's see if we can find a pattern of movement. We can move this or this. That's why I like doing up, up, down, down, or across and back. It's just kind of easier for me to remember than the, word, uh, than the names of the algorithms. So let's design something that's that's kind of easy to remember, easy to keep in mind. But let's say we'll call this up, across, then down, back. Now it's easy to undo that. We just go across, down, back, up. Okay. So you saw the first part, which is uh, two moves, and then two further moves that undo it, and then you reverse it. So let's do it again. Up, across down, back. Now I'm making this up right now. Now before I move on, is there a piece that can be isolated? Because I know that when I undo it, only these pieces are affected. No other piece is affected. So if I look here, this piece here can be sequestered. None of the, anything else here is affected by the reverse of this move. So if I take this and simply do a move like this, an M move down like this, I'm going to take this out and replace it with this, but I know this is the only piece that will be affected. None of the uh, rest will. So these two will be involved in the three cycle. Now let's reverse it. Uh, let's reverse it and then put this back at the end. So it'll be across, up, back, down. And now we move this back up. And so you can see that we have caused a three cycle. This went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. So it's easy to design a commutator. All you have to do is two moves, then reverse the two moves, then make some other move where you found a piece that's isolated from the areas. In other words, a piece that along the plane that you turn, nothing else in that plane is going to be affected uh, because nothing else was affected when you reversed it. Then the second half is you just do the opposite of what you just did. So now we can predict that because of this rotation here, we can cycle it again. Up, across, down, back. This piece is the only piece amongst these that can be sequestered, so it can move this down. And now reverse it. Across, up, back, down, and this moves back up. So we've three cycled these again. Now again, I don't want you to memorize this. This is purely for demonstration purposes. And you can figure this out in the middle of your solve. My suggestion though, is don't do that on your scrambled puzzle because it might be hard to keep track of what pieces went where, especially if it's scrambled. So I usually take a puzzle when I first have it and start designing commutators and uh, ones that are easy to remember. So up, across, down, back, bring this down, and then we go back, up, across, back, and we bring that here. Now, is that the commutator that I want to use? Well, let's try to find something that's even easier to remember, something that, uh, that's going to be, um, I don't know, easy to pick up, pick up again and, and, and solve this again. So let's go up, up, down, down. That's easy to remember. Now, what can be isolated amongst here? What can be isolated and moved through a layer that doesn't get affected? Nothing in this layer got affected, will get affected except this. So I can move this anywhere. I can move it here. I can move it here. I can do a variety of things. Let's take this and move it back over here. Now let's reverse what we did. So that's gonna be up, up, down, down, and now bring this back. So you can see we have a three cycle here to here, here to here, and here to here. Now we can do another three cycle where it does the same thing, only maybe bring it over to here. Up, up, down, down. Bring it back. Up, up, down, down. Bring it forward. So now we've three cycled it again. Um, one more time should do it, but let's mix it up a little bit. We'll go up, up, down, down. Now we could move this back or we could move it this way. If we move it this way, that's going to have a different kind of a three cycle. So then we're going to go up, up, down, down, and now move it back. 
So what we've done is I've actually taken that and I've cycled it to here. So now I've got a three cycle over here that, um, uh, well, it was actually three cycle that went across here. This one just didn't get touched. So if I do that two more times by moving it this way and then one more time moving this way, I'll have it done. Okay, so with that, we've got a commutator that can help us out, and that's what I do. So with this puzzle, the first thing that I do is take a simple uh, number of steps. I'll take two moves that intersect each other, and then I reverse those two moves. I take a look and see what pieces moved around. Take a look at what layer I can isolate one of those pieces, especially in a layer where nothing else has moved except for that one piece. Move it out of the way, put another piece in, and then reverse the move. And uh, when you do this, don't design the commutators, although you could do it this way, but I wouldn't recommend doing it in the middle of the solve. Work it out at the beginning and just do moves that are easy to remember. For me, up, up, down, down, and then turning it across like this or it across like that, substituting something else and then reversing that. Um, for me is, is easy enough to remember. So what I'll do is I'll do the up, up, down, down, and then I'll move this to one side. Let's say we'll move to a side over here. Then um, undo it with an up, up, down, down, and then move it back. So that's going to be my free cycle of choice. Up, up, down, down, turn, up, up, down, down, Turn back, and once more, up, up, down, down, turn, up, up, down, down, and turn back. Okay. Now what about these guys here? What, what about the wedges? How about ways of turning that around? Well, I rather suspect that if I don't focus on these guys, but I just focus on these, that should be fairly straightforward in terms of putting in and, re and reducing these. What about these triangles here too? Well, likewise, we can come up with different variations and different ways of um, rotating these. I will point out that the kind of piece this is, is actually a lot like the kind of piece that this is. So these corner areas and these edge areas are probably the same kind of piece involved in the same kind of movement. But as I suspect that I can intuitively place that, I'm going to hold off on, on designing any commutators in my head that, that could do that. But um, my first point is how to come up with commutators. So just kind of play around with that. When you get a new puzzle, make your own commutators. It doesn't really matter which one it is. You may look at tutorials and find a commutator from someone. Understand there wasn't anything fancy that they did. You could have done that and you could actually even design your own.